Ball out, ball out, here the supporters come. Stand up, scrum up, centre's got the ball. It goes to Nolden, he's a bold and Albert Pimblet, here's the call. Pass the ball to Bevan, he's the man to beat them all. Ball out, ball out, here the supporters come. I'll tell you what, you have really 20,000 people singing that. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I think when everybody comes out, what do they talk about? What happened last week or what's gonna hopefully happen this week and and who's playing well and you know it's it's always a talk when people come out, you know, to the pubs and whatever. That is just the talk, it's the talk of the town. I can still remember that day vividly that you know I'm at Lausher's Lane running round behind Mike Nicholas and John Bevan and Tommy Martin and the week before I'm stood on the terrace singing their names it was a crazy situation. My first ever encounter was with Locker you know so I've walked in and Ocker's the most horrible man you will ever meet in your life <laughs> and uh, I always remember turning up saying I'm here for academy training it's my first session and he said well you can f because they're not here training tonight. <laughs> and I nearly like walked away then. I, I knew I'd have a testimonial. From the day that I signed, it was just, it was just within me. I knew I was going to be there for a long, long time uh, because I simply enjoyed it that much. You just kind of get that feeling when you walk out and go, well, this is me, I'm, I'm, I'm done. It's got me, you know, I'm, 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 here for, I'm here for the long term now. I was uh, knocking about the town with my friends and, and, and then I sort of disappeared for two months. And the next time they saw me, I was running out uh, in, in a Warrington shirt, and I think a few were a bit astounded, and a, a few thought they were seeing things. You know. And this always was for me an underdog club, where Wigan were buying every international from every club, thus strengthening Wigan, and also weakening every other club around them. It kind of left the rest of us in their wake, and you've got to try and work out how you're going to try and compete. And we had to create our own image, and if that was going to be, you know, the toughest, most uncompromising team in the in the division, well, it kind of suited and it kind of fit all those people that the club then employed. You know, we we worked very very hard during that period to, to to have the nickname of the Zoo. It was the away team that called it the Zoo, and we just come across it, um, just some conversation at Lancashire, and we're oh no, we're going to the Zoo, and we turn around me and Greg and say. Well, I thought he was coming to Wildersfield and playing us. He said, that's what everybody calls your ground in rugby league, the zoo. There's only others who didn't know what it was called, the zoo. And it's the fastest and toughest game in the world. Because if you look at this in American football, these fellas don't wear pants or helmets. In one of my first games at Widnes, I was, I, wa I was tattled, but they didn't get me down. And this fist came up and the knuckles went, hit my eyeballs. And I tell you what, I'd gone blind. Couldn't see, don't know how I got home. Mountford, the, the manager, came down on the Sunday. He fit for tomorrow. I couldn't see through my eyes. So, yeah, that was an early introduction to the game. He was the biggest guy I'd ever seen as a 17, 18 year old kid. Well, this day, Eddie met me and absolutely creamed me. And he just went, Welcome to Rugby League, son. I went, Thanks a lot. You know, I had nothing against the guy, and I'm sure he's got nothing against me. We just played for opposition clubs. Um, and he caught me, and he caught me a good one. I think he'd been sent off, I'm just about trying to come round on the floor and he'd come back on the field and stamped on my hand and carried off. And at that point, you know, instinct does kick in, common sense certainly doesn't. And a penalty's been given. Oh, and there's another battle going on. Well, this is the unacceptable... You know, with the benefit of hindsight, I've done exactly the same thing, you know, because you can't have that, can you? He was a survivor of the fittest, really. Linesman, he was sort of... Incidental. Incidental, yeah, they, <laughs> you know, they, they, they couldn't come on. Come on. They couldn't come on. So it was down to the referee. I got flattened, really flattened. And this referee, he comes running up beside me, he said, I saw that, I know who it is. Get him back, but don't let me catch you. <laughs> 
In terms of the collision, the key was, and it's something you learnt very early, is, is do them before they do you. It's the hardest game in the world to play. Well, it's all the easiest, if that makes sense. We've got the, the hardest, the strongest, the fittest athletes running about. And it's so, so easy because you only have to tackle and run the ball in. Oh, that's an interception and Warrington are going to score. It looks like Lee Breers is going to go in. And it's a try for the Warrington Wolves. There was no animosity. They were, they were professional. And I think that's why they're also admired. I think uh, it's a tough sport that they play and they, they go out there and, and risk themselves and risk injury, but then can come off the field and... And be gentlemen. And then after the game, you'd all be in one bath. It's 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 crazy to think of it. You'd have thirty blokes, all naked, sharing a bar of soap, and you just spent eighty minutes, you know, leathering each other up and down, up and down a field. It's about people challenging themselves to become better as um, off the field and on the field. It's not a bad thing having mistakes or making mistakes. It's unless you try some things, and you know, you don't know how far your boundaries are either. You realise what it took to go, let's say the extra mile on the pitch. I learned a long, long time ago that I wasn't the best player that's ever worn the primrose and blue, but I was going to be remembered. I was going to come off that field at 4.30 and the, the 5,500, 6,000 people that had bought a ticket were going to know I'd played. You don't have to be the best player in the world to be the best player in the team. Just do with your best, and when they're going home, do a bit more, and you'll get in front of them eventually. I think it's important to enjoy what you're doing, and we try to enjoy each and every day of our work. Uh, we try to have some fun and make it an in enjoyable uh, place to come. If it ever becomes a chore or we put a, too much pressure on ourselves where we're not enjoying it, well, what's the point? It was a game full of characters and that's, uh, it, it, just, it just caught the imagination. You had to sit in a V sit-up position with your legs up and the first one drop him, there was gonna be like major problems for the first one that dropped him. And Chris Hyden said, have you know what, Tony? He said, it's, it's Christmas Day tomorrow. And he went, oh, sorry about that. Start singing Silent Night. <laughs> and everybody sat there and he said, if you drop your legs, you know, they're all singing these carols. And no one had dropped the legs. There was a kick from the touchline. And this fella said to me, from the crowd, he said, I bet you don't kick it. I said, I bet I do. He said, right, there's five shillings on it. So <laughs> I hit it and he went straight between the post. And I went like that. And he put five shillings in me, hadn't he? He gave me the five he shillings. He gave me the five shillings, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing, it's funny, anything what people couldn't get, I was in a position where I knew somebody who knew somebody who could get it. I think without Warrington Rugby League Club, I'd probably be still doing jail time. Matiki Maffey was a, a missionary, and I remember finding him in boots in town when it was on Bridge Street with his uh, rugby boots in a carrier bag, like walking round and I just said to him, what are you doing mate, what are you looking for? And he, he opened his bag out and he said, I need some studs. And he'd seen boots <laughs> <laughs> and thought he could get studs through there. So he's walking round going, can, can, you, can you fix me boots? <laughs> uh, it's much, much nicer to be part of uh, seeing People develop as people and as players and, and that you feel that you've left not just a trophy behind, that you've left a bit more of a legacy as, a, as somebody who's helped some young people become better and helped them achieve their dreams. It's sculpted the person I am and, and the way I am as a parent, the way as I am as an individual and the way I live my life um, is all down to rugby league, I think. It does come round quickly. I, when I was 18, I thought I was going to play for 30 years and you do and you can't see past the next training session, the next game, and then you get to 27, 28, I sort of realise there's a big world out there. Looking back, you know, um, it was the time of my life, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world, but I think um, you end up in a little bubble of thinking it's going to last forever. Surreal is, 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 a, is, a, is a great word for it, because you just can't quite, you're in, you, you know you're in something, you know it's happening, you just can't quite believe it's happening at that point, and, and to you. My heart will always be in Warrington, it's... Uh nearly spent half my life here. Well, I have spent half my life travelling to Warrington, so it'll always hold a special place in my heart. I don't think you can get any more proud of playing with the jersey on, on you than being a Warrington lad. When you look back, of that, that period of time was when Warrington changed into a good team, and obviously, hopefully, we can build on that and 
kick on with that now throughout the and leave a bit of a um, legacy if you like behind and even when each one of us have gone that we leave behind something that's rolling and, and be, going to be successful in the future that whoever comes in um, continues that role of, of success it brings everyone together from that background because I mean whether you come from New Zealand or Samoa or Australia and then you throw all these people together and expect them to like go out there and die for each other really and do everything you can to get that result and uh, that's the, the f your lasting memories from from what it is it's like coming together as like a little mini community and it's and it's you against the world if you're a supporter of of, of, of any any club any sport and you stand on a terrace and um, you know you're singing the songs and you know all the players and your week post game is built on whether they've won or whether they've lost or um, you know, you're going to beat your local rivals from, from down the road, around the corner, over in Yorkshire. You know, you kind of buy into something that's, that's so important to, to an awful lot of people. The club, I think, has been a focal point of the town. Whereas people can say, you know, Warrington, ah, rugby league, Liverpool, football, Manchester, football, Warrington, it's known for its rugby league. Because I've been here so long, I know what it is. And it means to, to, to the fans of to win something. Those fans have access to those players. It's as simple as that. They live next door to them. Now in soccer, they don't. They don't sit on a bus with them. They don't walk down the street with them and say, hello, Harry, how are you doing? Good game on Saturday, or what were you doing on Monday? They are together. And there is that togetherness about this game, and that's one of its greatest strengths, is that um, from top to bottom, from chairman to programme seller, everybody's in the game.